Let's have a discussion and lesson on this piece. Um, follow the lesson for free and pick up some of the tips and um, some stylistic elements of the music. But if you're interested, I do have a sheet music edition of this work. It's part of my Gaspar Sands collection, volume two, which is six, six pieces by Gaspar Sands. And there's a link for that in the description. So uh, this particular piece is one of the more um, advanced pieces in the collection. Um, I would still put it at the intermediate range, but there's, you know, a couple of things about it that can make it a little bit challenging here and there. Um, if you add a lot of ornamentation where it's marked in the score, um, then it can be a little bit more challenging. And also I'm going to talk about that inner little section from measure 65 to, to 84 around. Um, I've seen many editions of this work, and or not many actually, only only like two or three other editions of this work, but they actually usually take out the inner section. So they actually just don't include measure 65 to 84. 
because um, it's a little bit on the idiomatic side to the Baroque guitar rather than the modern guitar. But we'll talk about that and um, I'll leave it up to you whether you want to include it or not. I think it does work, uh, but you have to handle it in a certain way. So uh, the, the main thing about this piece is I think it just needs a nice um, gentle but forward moving flow to the pulse. Uh, some of the sections you know, if you take out that intersection, you could go a little bit faster if you wanted. But to some extent, that intersection requires some rubato, so so uh, you could change the tempo there a little bit if you needed to. Besides that, there's no huge stretches or anything like that. Lots of exploration of the guitar, so it's it's a really great piece in that regard. Um, let's just talk about the ornaments first. Um, most of the trills I'm doing from the written note to the note above and then returning. Um, there's a fair amount of uh, mordants in this piece and not a lot of cadential trills. So most of the trills I'm doing like that, with the exception of a couple of the trills near the cadences where I'll start on the written note, and uh, start on the note above. Uh, so if the written note is B, I'll go C, B, C, B. Um, at a cadence, starting from the note above, add some harmonic tension and a non-chord tone to the mix. So you can feel free to do that. But the majority of trills within the phrase, um, I just start from the written note and go to the one above. And then there's some mordants. So any um, of my short trill markings, which are just like un undefined ornaments in this piece, I would play as mordants just for contrast. Uh, so that starts from the written note goes to the note below and returns to the written note. The VIB is vibrato and uh, vibrato on the broke guitar is uh, was probably a, a pretty intense little ornament um, almost like a modulating trill. Uh, I think on the modern guitar the effect is not quite the same so I don't I don't do much with that maybe I do a little bit of vibrato but I wouldn't worry too much about those markings. Um, I think that covers the um, the ornaments. I'll go over it as I do a walkthrough of the piece now. Um, all the slurs that I'm playing are, are editorial, but uh, you can add more or less, so it's up to you. So I do that first trill actually from starting from the note above because the note before is a B, and so you can kind of create a suspension over the bar line there by playing, starting on the upper note. And then for the next phrase. So all those trills are just starting from the written note. Measure nine. A little mordant there. Cadential trill there, uh, meaning that it's it's happening on the five chord that resolves to the one chord. So you have some tension and then resolution. So uh, on those, I like to start from the note above to add some tension and a non-chord tone to the five chord, and then resolve. I usually leave that trill out. say in that passage. I did a, a little bit of, of changing of the octaves there. Um, Sands uses um, his open bass strings and, and creates a bass line that is kind of jumps around uh, but only at certain places so I just made it a little bit more consistent by having the bass line go G, A, G, C and then the low sixth string there making it a, a little bit more consistent. So I didn't change the notes, but I played around with the octave because the tuning of the bro guitar is quite different and it does require some adjustments on occasion. 
So let's go from that um, section at around 34 there. I do a mordant. Same thing there, mordant. from the B because it creates that suspension over the bar line. I like this. I shouldn't talk. But I like that rising this rising line here that then falls. is editorial. The original just has an E. I, I think it just it's nice to have that, that C in there. For for a cadence. I, I don't always add the all the mordants here. Fingering there on the F with the second finger in measure 57 or 8 um, is just because you are you, the note before is one, so I use the two just to avoid a clipping of the C there. Okay, so when you get to the end of this section. Um, you can either play measure 65 on or you can skip it. I'll really leave it up to you. Some editions actually just skip this section and jump right to either measure 77 or all the way to 85. This whole section um, sounds quite a bit different and idiomatic on the Baroque guitar. On the modern guitar, um, it's just a little bit different. I play it with quite a bit of rubato, almost like a, a section that's separated from the piece uh, but is like a little cadenzas and like little um, flourishes, right? So I just found that playing it in time sounded wrong almost. Like the, the actual notes, if you play the notes slowly, one at a time, instead of as a flourish, it actually sounds kind of wrong to me. Like... Or the next one... Like, it just doesn't sound quite right to me. Like, but when you play it as a flourish, you know, and you just emphasize the quarter note beats, and then you go towards your destination, it makes much more sense. It, it, it kind of takes away the emphasis of each note, and instead just makes it into a pattern that goes somewhere making it quite effective and the dissonances don't come out very much because you don't you're not playing them like um, like that but you're you know you're just kind of uh, creating tension but just zooming right through it and not dwelling on it so um, that's what I did with my performance of the section um, I'll leave it up to you what you want to try I did practice it with a metronome to make sure it's in time but I think it just sounded much better with with um, as like a, not a romantic rubato section, but just more of like a Baroque improvisatory flourish. Uh, you can skip the whole thing if you want, but, uh, but if you do it, that's how I would recommend playing it. Just emphasize the quarter note beats and then make them flourishes that tumble towards the next beat. Uh, we'll play it though from... time right also those shifts are incredibly difficult to play if you were playing it like in strict time you know and, and when you do it faster it's just like 
It's almost like you're improvising. Which I think is actually probably more appropriate to the period than trying to play it strictly. Actually, not that hard of a, of a shift. There. I just got too excited. Use the open string there so you can grab that chord, and then I start strumming this section. Baroque guitar has a lot of strumming. Um, this whole section is uh, doesn't notate the frets in the tablature. It just uses their chord system, so it's just chords. You could improvise like arpeggios or do all sorts of things here. Um, I strum, you know, just to, to um, add a different flavor to the piece. And I usually go down, down, up, down, down, up, down. A little bit of melodic material. This section is not that difficult unless you add all the ornamentation. There's so much ornamentation listed that it makes it an incredibly difficult section. However, if you're more on the early intermediate level, um, you could take out, you know, 80% of the ornaments and this would be very playable. And it would still sound great, right? <laughs> So there I just added like one trill for that whole passage instead of <laughs> so much, but it's really fun and, and quite ornate and decorative and kind of a very cool ending to the piece to have so much ornamentation. So I'll leave it up to you. Um, I will walk through and tell you what I did with the ornaments, but but you know, suffice to say like I, you could do a lot of different things with this section, so I'll um, I encourage you to experiment and come up with your own ideas. Um, a lot of the tr uh, ornaments in this section are kind of like an undefined ornament, so I'm playing a lot of them as mordants, but I change some of them to trills, um, partly just for technical reasons. It's like sometimes it's just too awkward to do a mordant, so I'll just show you what I do. Mordant, mordant, trill, mordant. This cadence there might be too much of a stretch for some people. But the original doesn't have that low C, so or it's up an octave. So if you want, if that stretches too much, you could just go or add the E. So you could just go G B just play an E and a C there. That would make that stretch so easy and it actually kind of closer to the original. But, you know, the bass line, um, it just messes up the bass line, the octave of the bass line. So I changed it and let there be a big stretch. But I know that'll be difficult for some people. So feel free, the last two chords, just to play an open G and then an E and a C. And that's all. And it would sound great. So... Either way, I just chose to do that because I could, and um, it sounds very consistent that way. Next section, I do a mordant, mordant, trill, mordant, mordant, trill, mordant, 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 mordant. I don't do that trill, uh, although you could. It's not that hard. I just maybe I just forgot. Actually left it out in the performance. Mordant. I don't do this trill at the end. If you did, you have to change to a different finger to do it. Uh, so I just didn't do it. Because there's enough ornaments. 
And then it just ends with this beautiful cascading little section. Like a, a st very strong cadence there. Um, he kind of breezes through the five chord and then does a whole nother measure of the one chord. So it's a pretty gentle ending, which is, is kind of nice. It's like he gives you that really ornate, like um, ornamented section, and then you just kind of like um, waterfall out of the piece. So uh, very cool piece filled with just uh, just a ton of variety and um, just de definitely one of Sanz's more significant works which you don't hear performed almost ever. I never hear this piece performed, so I was really happy to, to find it and kind of try try to work out solutions to some of the issues, which is the reason I think some people don't play it. Uh, it's just that the solutions to those problems, um, you have to be a little creative with it. Um, but like I said, it's just such a great intermediate level work. <laughs> 